Hello, welcome to St. Fabian Catholic Church via the World Wide Web. I am Barbara Whitten, your commentator and lector, and our celebrant is Father Tommy. This is the 15th day, Sunday in Ordinary Time. At the start of our Mass, we open our hearts in silence to hear a word from God. Listen to the word. You are the body of Christ. Christ's life flows through you and flows through us all, linking us together. And I, too, welcome all of you for this, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My hope is that you have your blessing plate and your blessing cup with some bread and wine in your domestic church. We begin by remembering we have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised his Son Jesus from the dead, be with all of you. And with your spirit. So whether you're in Mullingar or Mineola, Conroe or Crawford, Biloxi or Brick. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist here at our St. Fabian Church. And we're called on to, to sow good seeds, seeds of hope, seeds of life, seeds of truth, justice, and peace. And sometimes we do very well, sometimes we fail. So we pause in God's presence to ask for forgiveness for our sins. You show the light of your truth to your faithful people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You promise forgiveness and healing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. We give glory and praise to God as we sing.
we pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that we may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Jesus and to strive after all that does it honor. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior and Lord, forever and ever. Amen. We listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow came down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls, falls on good, good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed, seed that, that falls, falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the suffering of this present time are nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. The creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The liturgist would tell me that my job as pastor is to break open God's word, to basically explain in the sermon or the homily what Jesus means in his words. But luckily, for this weekend and next weekend, Jesus does it for us. The readings are a little bit longer, so it means my sermon will be very short because Jesus explains it all. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him 
as he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell on the path. Birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. But when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus said in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and they will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what they have will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You shall indeed hear and not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted and heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. I could finish the parable there, uh, and, it, and write this sword and say the gospel of the Lord, but Jesus says further. Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in that person's heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But they have no root, and only last for a while. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of all the word, they immediately fall away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word of God. But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Exactly four months ago, this weekend, we suspended all celebration of pub public masses. This weekend, we resume slowly with our 9 a.m. mass on Sunday morning outdoors. I want to reassure many of you who will continue to tune online, our masses online will continue for the next seven years. After that, I'm unsure, but I'm pretty sure for the next seven years, you'll get them online, so don't, don't worry. And so somebody asked me, what has happened, what has changed since four months ago? Well, not a whole lot really, except we have come to realize the danger of this virus. We have come to realize that it's important to wear masks, it's important to physical distance, it's important to wash our hands regularly, and for the sake of our brothers and sisters, to make sure that we, we protect them. So if we truly love one another, I believe we'll follow the guidelines that are given to us. I just want to reassure everybody, the work of the church did not stop for the last four months. 
In that time, every day, our church was unlocked from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and from 4 p.m. And 6 to 6 p.m., and many people came and prayed. I've heard wonderful stories of people in their domestic church having their blessing plate and their blessing cup, having a special altar, and being prayerfully gathered every Saturday evening or Sunday morning. Uh, at St. Fabian alone, we have had in the last four months 11 funerals. We have another one on Tuesday. 14 baptisms, two of which were adults. Four weddings, and there's another one planned for next weekend, and lots more stuff. I probably have celebrated the sacrament of the anointing of the sick with at least 20 people in those four months. But here's my favorite story, and this is where good seed is sown. I have a young man contacted me, and his mother had attempted to go to classes to become Catholic several times, but for various reasons was not able to complete. When COVID-19 struck and her son had more time, he catechized her mother. What does that mean? He taught her. He taught her about baptism. He taught her about confession and reconciliation. He taught her about Holy Communion, confirmation, marriage, and the anointing of the sick. He actually brought the faith to his own mother who had never been baptized. And this past Wednesday, right here at the font at St. Fabian, I had the privilege of baptizing her, giving her her first Holy Communion, and celebrating confirmation with her. The nice thing for her as an adult, she didn't have to go to confession because all her sins are washed away in baptism, so she gets a clean start. Very emotional for me as a pastor, but I really believe that's where we sow the good seeds of our faith, whether we're gathered for public masses or in our private domestic churches, we continue to sow seed on good soil, and we produce maybe 100, maybe 60, or maybe just 30, but we produce good fruit. God bless, and please sow good seeds. Amen. We profess our faith, and we're going to use the Apostles' Creed. It's a little bit shorter than the other one. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have received God's mercy. Humbly we ask for the needs of the church and the world, in a special way we're praying in this Mass for Jonathan Farris and for Byron Smith, whose funeral will take place on Tuesday. Let us pray. That we may spread the hopeful and exciting message of the gospel <clears throat> through both our words <clears throat> and deeds to, that others may encounter you, who loves us unconditionally. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may offer others the joy of coming to know your love through sharing the story of our faith journey. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That you will free the human family from the coronavirus, guide all who are searching for treatments or a vaccine, and protect all who are vulnerable from the disease. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers, that you will give them strength as they care for the sick and protect them from illness. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who gather here in community seek ways to reach out in love to those who are alone. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jonathan Ferris and Byron Smith, may their hopes be fulfilled as they share in your rising from the dead we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs, which we pause to remember in silence. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious, 
loving and giving God, you grant our needs. Listen, these are intentions which we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Children, I want to remind you as we have our offertory, our pickle jar is still here. So hopefully you have your own pickle jar in your home. And when we get back to church uh, in a more organized way, we'll have you bring your pickle jars to show off to everybody. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of many human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. We ask you to be pleased with our sacrifice, which we offer you now with humble and with contrite hearts. So I wash, just wash my hands. So my sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable and pleasing to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice of your, your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as we make our prayer to you, so that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring even greater holiness and invite each one of us to know you, to love you, to serve you, and to sow good seeds in our community. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed your people in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with the saints, with the angels, with the whole company of heaven, we praise you as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, host. heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make her therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his apostles, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice filled with wine, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his apostles, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as now we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, God our Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope Francis, with our Bishop Lewis, and all church leaders. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially Jonathan Farris and Byron Smith. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Fabian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Several people who live alone have said, I love it when you say at the Lord's Prayer, we're not alone. Remember, you're not alone. We're joining our voices with the wider church in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all kinds of evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all worry, distress, and anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, after your resurrection, your first words to your apostles were, Shalom, peace be with you. We ask you now, do not look on our sins, but Lord, look on our faith. Look on the faith of your church, your people scattered throughout the world. Graciously grant us unity and peace in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Maybe you're with some people that you can share a sign of peace with at this time in your domestic church. And I invite you to pray quietly for peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who grants us peace and takes away our sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you at this time to join in our spiritual communion. If you repeat after me, please. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And as we sing our communion hymn, perhaps you can break bread and share the cup in your domestic church. And so we pray, having listened to your word and celebrated this Eucharist, we pray that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may continue to grow each and every day that we produce good fruit. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Again, I want to say thanks to all of you for tuning in with us. And uh, I just want to say again, I appreciate your generosity. People have been using Venmo. They've been using our online services. People have been dropping checks by the church or mailing them in. And I surely appreciate that as we continue to, to live alongside this pandemic. And with that in mind, this weekend we're reopening with our 9 a.m. Uh, outdoor mass. And that 9 a.m. mass will be every Sunday, weather permitting. And that will be a probably a Friday call or a Saturday call, if it's looking like it's going to be stormy or pouring down rain, that Mass will be cancelled. It won't be moved indoors because we have to still be ready to celebrate the Mass at 11 a.m. So this weekend with the 9 a.m. outdoor Mass, uh, as long as the Governor and the people in charge let us uh, to continue to celebrate, next weekend on July 19th, we'll have 9 a.m. Mass outdoors at the storage building. Bring your tents, 
Bring your chairs, bring your umbrellas, anything that you need. We'll make it fast, not too fast. And then we'll gather inside again for the 11 a.m. Mass. And the following weekend, we'll add a vigil Mass, so I won't go down that road yet. We would like you to register, stfabian.com backslash register. It helps us with our numbers. It helps us with our volunteers. And we need more and more volunteers as we go forward. I know many people are still scared, and, and rightly so. At St. Fabian, we've approximately 10 people who have had the virus. They say every person infects three others. So at one mass, if all 10 of them have been present, 30 more will more than likely have been infected leaving that mass. And that's why we're being super, super careful. As your shepherd, as your priest, I want to make sure that we do everything in our power to keep you safe, that you feel safe, and that you stay healthy. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you, your family, and your home forever and ever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. You're not going anywhere, so stay home. Do your best to love and serve the Lord and sow good seeds. And thanks be to all of you for praying with us. Enjoy the rest of the day and have a great week, everybody.